just back in from an awesome relic hunting trip. Last weekend I went out and did a little exploration and I had a great time. Now, unfortunately I did not bring my camera with me so I don't have any video of me actually digging these things up. But I found 15 cannonballs or artillery shells from the Civil War in two days. I found seven the first day and eight the second day and there may be a few more there yet so I'm going to go back. Let me show you what I found and what I'm going to do to them. And here they are. Check these bad boys out. Isn't that awesome? Two days of hunting. Now most of these are confederate. There's probably at least one Yankee shell in here that I can tell but until I get them cleaned up I won't know for sure. These are the round 12 pounders that I found. Now some of these are solid shots, so I don't have to do a whole lot to them except clean them up, run them through electrolysis. I think this is probably a solid shot too. I have to clean it up. This is definitely a solid shot. See, there's no fuses. Now this is a fuse shell. This type of fuse right here is confederate. And you can see the hole right there. That was a paper insert that went in there. So this is totally soaked on the inside. These are little six pound cannonballs. This is a solid shot. And the, this is a fused Borman ball. I think this is probably going to turn out to be confederate as well, just like this one. See, they haven't been punched. If they were punched, they'd have a hole right here on the timer. That means they were fired. But it wasn't punched, so this was dropped and not fired. This is actually, I think, a Yankee shell right here. I believe it's the top to a Hotchkiss. But a couple that are really encrusted. I'm not positive what they are. Uh, I think this is probably a confederate reed because I can see this band right here. And you see the brass band there too, and it looks like a little nub sticking out. So this is probably a mullein. This one has something stuck to it. it. Looks like a leg. Not sure what that's all about, but I can see a little bit of a brass band right here too, and it looks like it has a little nub. Well, it actually, doesn't. So I don't know if this might be a mullein or might be a reed, but we'll break it apart and see. This is a 20 pounder. I actually haven't found too many of these. This is Confederate because this type of fuse right here which is the same as in this round ball, is strictly confederate and it was paper in the middle so it's totally filled with uh, water and mud too so it's absolutely no problem with that. This is a nice little reed shell. Kind of broken up right there a little bit but yeah really cool. Oh this is my best find right here. I've never found one quite like this. This is a 12 pound cannonball. I think it's probably going to be a solid shot. What you see here is a wood cup and the bands that hold the wood cup on the cannonball. But very seldom do you find the wood still on these things. This was down in the clay, so the wood was still preserved. And these probably would have had the same thing, but the wood rotted away over the years. So this is a new one for me. I've not found any with this big uh, wood cup right here. I've only seen pictures of them in some of the relic books. So I'm really happy about that. But let's take a few minutes and we'll clean these up just a little bit. Tap some of these uh, rocks off and we'll see what we have for sure. All right, so let's move on to one of the mystery shells. I had to change my shirt too, because I didn't want to get my nice uh, green Garrett shirt all dirty, because this is going to be filthy. This is actually an old shirt I had on uh, when I was finding these things. So take a look at this. We can see the copper band right here, the rotating band. So we know this is the bottom, this is the top. So we'll just start here breaking off some of these bigger rocks and uh, we'll get a little closer look at it. I don't know if you can hear a skitter bug in the background howling, but it doesn't like me talking out here apparently. So we'll just start tapping this a little bit. See how it's breaking off like that? I haven't gotten down to the shell yet. When we do, it'll come off easy. There it goes. Alright, so you can see the shell starting to become exposed here. You can see the beautiful flame groove. I think it's going to be a pretty nice one when we're done with it. You can actually hear the sound of the tap changing as this stuff cracks. It sounds more hollow. There, there it goes. See it just it popped? That means it's cracked and I can actually see it cracked right here. Ease that off nice and easy. Ah, look at that baby. It's coming alive. That thing stinks. Man, that smells like sulfur. Get off. Get off. That's the fuse on this one. And again, this is just a wooden fuse. 
and uh, this this will be an open hole going down through there. It's probably got some junk in it, but there's not much danger to this one either. Well, there's really not much danger to any of these shells unless you put them in a fire. They cannot go off by hitting them with a hammer. See here, pop like that. We know it's gonna fall right off now. Look at that baby. So be careful not to hit the shell itself. Eh, okay, I'll tap this just a little bit, see what happens. You want to get them cleaned up a little bit before the electrolysis tank. Ah, look, there's some wood left on there. See, that's wood too, just like that other shell. This had a wood driving band, and the reason they had this on here, we think, we don't even know for sure, is so that when the shell was fired, you know, the, the propellant would push against this, against the rotating band here, or the sabot, and it had a tendency to break off. So they, they put the wood on there to have a nice even push on it. So they figured that if, with the wood cup, it pushed evenly on the sabot and it wouldn't break off like that. That's why we think this wood is here. I found a few like this. I have to be a little careful since it, um, we don't want to hit the wood. I think that's all I'm going to do right there. Nothing already hit the wood, so. That turned out pretty nice. All right. Put these down here on the ground for now. That's a nice Confederate shell right there. Now we'll move on to another mystery shell. This is going to be the same kind, I'm pretty sure, because I can see the little square bolt right here and it looks like wood. This is pretty neat that I have all these with wood on them. You don't find them like that very often. So we'll tap this, these rocks off. Listen to it. Just listen how the noise changes. Still very sharp. Starting to go. Hear it? See it's cracking right through here. Oh yeah, look at that baby. It's like coming out of an egg. Newborn chick. Hmm. All right, let's hit it like this. Again, we don't want to hit the metal. Stuck a little bit harder on this one. Alright, let's go at it from this side. There we go. Yeah. Along. Hear it? Sounded hollow again. Yeah, it's beautiful. Beautiful shell here. Alright, y'all just Tap this up off the end. Look at that baby. Again, that's just a wood fuse that has paper in the center. So, this is a really easy one to take care of. Tap that off. Alright, I'm going to leave this alone because uh, I can see that's covered with wood right there. So, we'll do the electrolysis and then clean this up a little bit more. The stuff on the ground. Get another mystery shell. Well, this one's not too much of a mystery. I don't see a fuse on it. Some suspect it's probably a solid shot, but there could be a fuse under here. So let's tap this off and take a look at it. Again, don't hit the metal, just hit the rock. It's already cracking right there, good. Be a nice easy one. Yeah. Pretty. pretty. Yeah, there's a fuse right there. Look at that. That's a different kind, though. That's um, unlike the other 12-pounders that I have. I think. This might be a first for me, too. I don't know. All 
All right. Yeah, it's different. That has a drive-in wood fuse. I don't have any like this. This is the first for me. But you can see the wood is perfectly preserved. And in the center, it would have had a uh, paper fuse. So again, this is all wet on the inside, so there's no problem. I'm not going to do any more to this, except for this. And this. Maybe this. And uh, we'll let the electrolysis take care of the rest. Alright, let's get another mystery shell. That was nice. I like that one. Totally unexpected. We'll do this other round ball here. Again, I don't see a fuse, but it could be hidden just like that last one. It's going to crack off nice and easy too. It's peeling right off. Don't far nothing. They're actually more valuable if they have fuses. The round balls, uh, solid shots, aren't near as valuable for some reason. Yeah, there it is. Another drive-in wood fuse. Very nice. Two now, and that's you're totally new to my collection. I have hundreds of these things. Polish that up a little bit here. All right. Another fine shell. That's nice right there. I like that. All right. All right, let's grab another. We already see the fuse on this one, so we'll just kind of crack off the, uh, the crust a little bit to make it easier to do the electrolysis on. Hear it? Just crack. I kind of get a hollow sound. I it's ready to go. There we go. It's a messy job. That's a beauty. Again, it's unpunched, so this was dropped as well. Last but not least, we're going to do this weird one, which I'm pretty sure is a Mullein, by the way that iron is uh, on the end of it there. But it's got something stuck to it. I'm kind of interested to see what that thing is. Weird, huh? All right, where should we start? I guess we'll start right in here. Let's go. You can hear it changing already. There it goes. We'll find out what it is soon. So excited. Oh yeah, there she goes. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's a nice one, huh? That's going to clean up really nice. Again, in a wood fuse, paper uh, center. There's no danger with this. We'll crack the rest of this off of here, I guess. There it goes, hear it? Nice. That's going to be pitted though. Look how pitted that bad boy is. And the reason is, is this is laying in the water. The iron is slowly leaching out. And as the iron leaches out, it grabs all the sediment, all the rocks and sand, and that's what makes the cocoon. So when you see the big cocoon like this, you actually know that the cannonball is lighter than it was when it was first made, and that the iron is slowly dissolving. So if this was left in the river, you know, a couple hundred years from now, this would be hardly anything left of this one. So it's going to be kind of, this one's definitely going to be in rough shape. Actually, when you weigh them, you can you can tell too because it'll actually be lighter on the scale than a uh, one that hasn't lost a lot of the iron like these these have. Be a little bit careful here because if it has a that piece oh it's turning. Dude, that's a first. I wonder if I broke it. I've never seen that happen before. Let's see what happens. Oh look at that. Weird. That's new for me. 
A square stud that was on here has rotted away. You know how I told you this was all graphite here. You can see it on my hands. That's why it's spinning like that. It's not tight anymore. It's actually dissolved off, so nothing I could do about that. But we'll run this thing through electrolysis and get it cleaned up and uh, hopefully it won't look too bad. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do. We'll get these cleaned up. By the time you see this video, everything here will have been uh, rendered inert and we'll be going through the electrolysis process. So don't freak out about that. Almost forgot we need to find out what this thing is, I guess. Looks like a spike to me. This one's a mystery for sure. So this thing was in a bad spot. Yeah, it's an old spike. Yep, just an old spike. Kind of neat, you can see the green of this uh, the iron here. So that's wrought iron. That's an oldie for sure. This is what they look like with the crust broken off. And the next step is going to get them rendered inert and then run through electrolysis. And, and that's going to take me, uh, the inerting process will be done within the next day. Uh, electrolysis is going to probably take, you know, a couple of days for each shell. So, but I have five stations, so it'll go pretty quick. I ended up with some really nice balls here. This is a six pounder Confederate. Another Confederate 12 pounder. These over here are pretty neat. Three of those. You can see it has a wooden drive in fuse. This is a big Confederate Reed 20 pounder. And of course, that thing is going to turn out nice, I hope. I just have to figure out how to do this wood. This shell right here actually might be the rarest one of the lot. This is a uh, reed, but I think it's a special kind of reed that's tapered. I have never found one of these either. So I've got to get this looked at by a professional. And I'll probably have that done by the time I post this video. But yeah, that's a nice pile of shells right there. Uh, for two days, it's just phenomenal. I'm going to go back to this spot. Probably by the time you see this video, I will have hit it again. And I'll bring the camera next time. So, you know, I might have missed a few. I don't know. I don't think I missed a lot of them, though. Maybe just a couple. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you want, once I get them all cleaned up nice and run through electrolysis, I can show you what they look like. Just let me know.